Hello, welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I'm your host, Toshonda Sanders. Welcome to the Rouse Up for April 2020. Um, I read a number of books on my Kindle app um, and had ebooks for all of the books that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I will have pictures of them as I discuss them. Um, but first, I want to thank you. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. It's so exciting to have you here. Um, I've been delighted by the reception that I've gotten to the new booktube channel. So that's really exciting. Thank you for your support. Um, if you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you as one if you like what I'm talking about here. Um, and I will with that, I'll just get started. So in April, um, I began by reading um, Jaquira, Jaquira, Jaquira Diaz, Jaquita, it's probably Jaquita Diaz. I feel more confident about that for some reason. Um, I have started reading her memoir, Ordinary Girls. Um, it's such a great memoir, so visceral. I could definitely feel, see, and experience Puerto Rico and Miami, which is um, where she grew up. Um, the author, you know, was a, a kid, um, you know, kind of growing up in Puerto Rico with her parents, her father, um, dealt drugs, her mom uh, was schizophrenic, um, and so my mother had mental illnesses, um, so I could relate to a lot in the book, um, which was both good and bad. It was um, more, I think, emotional than I anticipated because I didn't read reviews of the book. I saw uh, a feature on Jaquita. I guess it was in the New York Times, um, but for whatever reason, I just didn't have a chance to pick up the book. Um, then uh, I actually um, realized when I was looking up the cover that the paperback comes out in June. So um, if you haven't had a chance to pick it up, you should probably look for the paperback um, since that's it's a really good. Um, cinematic memoir um, and uh, you know not only are there not that many memoirs about um, like the Latinx community um, like contemporary memoirs right like I've read um, Sandra Cisneros I've read um, you know a, a few others but I feel like there hasn't been uh, a memoir of the contemporary Latinx experience um, and so you know I say that because she identifies as like a black Latinx person um, and is also queer so that is uh, that to me was really refreshing to see that there was this really complex um, story that wasn't what I guess most people would call trauma porn. It wasn't like, oh, let me show you how dysfunctional my life has been. Um, but it also wasn't this neat, like, I'm exceptional and I've risen above everything. It was like messy in the way that our lives usually are and all the things that we usually love about our favorite protagonists, for instance, is that they are human and they are complex and so uh, they don't make choices that ideally we would like to make all the time um, but uh, they are uh, kind of transcendently human right in a way that um, really resonates with us I think so I loved that. Uh, I actually got it on my uh, New York Public Library Libby app. So shout out to the New York Public Library, always coming through. Uh, I sort of just like my reading on my phone. I'm just gonna say it. Like it's not. There's not anything wrong with it. Um, I think reading on my phone is better than not reading at all. But um, I like to cut down on screen time, which these days feels like an arbitrary metric. And um, you know, I can't fold the pages, I can't like write in the margins, even though that still feels kind of sacrilegious to me also. Um, so, but you know, on the other hand, it does cut down on having to admit that I have a, a book hoarding situation happening and I probably need to get a new bookcase. So, uh, pros and cons in the ebook world, but anyway, Ordinary Girls was um, my favorite one of my favorite reads in April. Um, 
and so I highly recommend you check it out. Um, it is very moving and it is a really beautiful, well-told memoir. The next nonfiction book that I read is called Death of, Deaths of Despair and the Future of Capitalism by Anne Case and Angus Deaton. Uh, I think that the latter, uh, Angus Deaton, is actually Sir Angus Deaton. Um, I believe that he, they are both economists. I think he recently won the Nobel Prize in economics. Uh, they uh, are colleagues, I believe, at Princeton. And this idea, Deaths of Despair, is related to something else I've been working on and writing about. Um, so uh, because it just sort of coincided with that, I decided to take a dip into Deaths of Despair. So Deaths of Despair um, are defined broadly as um, deaths um, by middle-aged white people, usually men, um, who um, either die by suicide or um, opioid drug abuse overdoses or alcohol related deaths. Um, and so I found this book to be a fascinating take on working class whites and the fact that it acknowledges that what these deaths of despair um, which also are so called because they really are impacting people, um, reversing sort of decades long um, mortality rates that were falling for white people are really small or really flat, um, but they've just skyrocketed. The mortality rates have just, you know, gone way up um, as a result of these deaths. And so the reason why I'm mentioning it in the context of Black Book Sex has to do with the fact that um, these uh, sort of deaths and this sort of despair was actually experienced first by the black community um, maybe like 50 years ago, right? Um, in the 70s and uh, the 60s, um, because it largely has to do with the way that labor has changed. And so if labor changes, right, when you become less of an industrial, you know, blue collar, unionized workforce into a more white collar, um, information based, um, you know, l less unionized, if unionized at all, workforce, then that takes certain people out of the mix. Um, and so it means that there are whole swaths of people who, if they don't have at least a bachelor's degree, um, are kind of ill-prepared to compete in the workplace or in the workforce and so some of them just drop out and kind of where do they go they kind of like they kind of languish you know they're not able to flourish in the economy um, yeah so I mean I thought it was fascinating to think about that to think about the complicity of the healthcare system uh, in America in um, provoking these deaths um, not just for the white working class, but in general, writ large, right? Like the ways that the American healthcare system is really set up to promote capitalism and to further it and not really to save uh, lives, which I think, you know, most people from the outside looking in, especially if you don't have that much interaction with the healthcare system, which I think we all kind of have more exposure to now, um, but if you, yeah, if you've never really interacted with the healthcare system, you don't really have that much insight into just how inefficient it is and ineffective it is in actually saving people and healing people um, because most of the time it is about profit-driven behavior. So that was not the most uplifting choice i could have made for a read in april but it was helpful for me to give language to some things that i've suspected but wasn't able to actually um confirm in any kind of way so definitely if you are interested in um thinking about capitalism markets labor how all these things actually end up affecting people in real time Certainly, you know, there's lots of conversation about Trump supporters and Trump voters, especially in the lead up to the next election. 
um, this I think gives some really important context to um, the values and the complaints um, that are coming out of those places. Finally, in April, I read All My Mother's Lovers by Alana Massad, and it is a great novel. Um, it's a, her debut, comes out May 26th. Um, and I'm gonna be reviewing this one, so I'll save my opinions for that and share them in some other capacity, I guess, at some point, or you can look for it later. Um, but I want to say that this book, you know, essentially, like, spoiler alert, in case you're going to read it, it's about um, this main character whose mom dies, and she has her, uh, she has letters, This her mom has written these letters to her lovers that her daughter then decides that she's going to go and distribute, um, you know, mostly on the west coast or you know like in the west they're they're based in like oxnard california so she you know it's a great premise um it's set up really nicely um the main character i f feel some type of way about like i liked her um i thought she was interesting um but you know she she was trying to do a lot in the in the book um the, the main character was and to some extent the author um, that felt um, like it distracted from the main storylines um, and the main plots and even some of the subplots um, but I think that's okay I, I, I liked um, I like the concept um, for the story in a lot of ways and so I thought it was worth checking out um, if you are into juicy novels um, it's also kind of like uh, you're probably sensing a theme but it's a so it's a queer family um, it's like a sort of a queer literary family novel um, and I feel like I haven't really read that many works of fiction that are contemporary that include so many different aspects of the queer experience. Um, and so for that, I really appreciated it. Um, and yeah, so that's a, that was a cool one. That was a cool one to read. It kind of balanced out the, the heaviness of the others. Um, you know, death is kind of <laughs> death and drug addiction seem to be the the things that I uh, ended up being the themes of my reads in April for whatever reason I guess I'm a client for punishment but um, I have a book haul for May that is decidedly more upbeat and happy so uh, look for that next um, and in the meantime I hope you are well and healthy and not too stir crazy that you have everything that you need and i will look forward to seeing you again for the next video all right thanks for tuning in talk to you soon